Hello, and welcome to another edition of Long Beach Treasures. I'm your host, Harvey Keller. Today we're going to be revisiting the Bembridge House. We visited it once in the year 2000, and many changes have been made, and so we're back to see what changes they've made. And joining me is Ira Schutz, uh, and she's going to talk about the house and take us on a tour. Iris, uh, welcome. Thank you very much, Harvey. Well, we are very happy with the work that has been done on the house. We've had it repainted recently. We have a new roof. We have a um, foundation has been uh, stabilized. And now we have heat in the house. So we're very pleased with all of the changes that have taken place. I noticed the emblem up on the peak uh, was not painted. Is that any reason? That is going to be uh, a rather, really expensive thing to have done and we haven't found the right person to do it. I mean, it's going to be many thousands of dollars. Everything else was done, but that one thing, it, it requires a new cast, a new plaster cast for that, and th we haven't found the person to do it yet. This looks so clean and neat in yes, comparison to, you know, it's the same color, but it just stands out so much more now. Yes, we're, we're so proud of how the house looks. Many of the neighbors coming by here, too, comment, and I'm always happy to talk to anyone who walks by, and I think that we have more respect for the house from the people in the neighborhood now that it's looking so much nicer. And the front door has been refinished? Yes, that was a gift. Uh, from uh, one of our members and that was done uh, one of the first things that was done and that makes the house look so much nicer let's go on up and this was built in when 1906 we just had our hundredth anniversary last year and it's a Queen Anne Victorian yes it is and the, some of the things you look for in that is the wraparound porch that you see here and uh, somewhere, at the, oh, up at the very top of the, uh, can you see way up at the top at the, where we're going to have the new plaster, there's fish scale uh, um, oh, yes. uh, uh, yes. siding up in there. That's rather unusual. And then we also have siding along the uh, ship, uh, ship side siding that is along the rest of the, the rest of the house, as you can the see. The narrow wooden The board. narrow wooden panel, yes, yeah. uh-huh. Let's go on up and see. Uh, this was originally built by Stephen and Josephine Green, yes. I believe? Yes, that's true, it was. Uh, he they, was a banker? Yes, he was, and he uh, built it uh, and only lived here for six years before he died. Uh, but he was, uh, and, and his wife lived here for another year, and then the house was sitting uh, on the market for about six more years until in 1919, uh, the Rankins bought the house, and they had admired the house previously, had come and, as a matter of fact, not only admired it so much, they built a house in the same style uh, back in, Ca in uh, Cambridge, Cambridge, Nebraska, Nebraska. Yes, in their hometown uh, before they moved out here permanently. And they built the home in the very same style because they admired this house so much. Well, let's go on in. Everything looks so different, so new and so clean. And I know. It's what a difference that I know. a few years <laughs> make. All right, let's go see what it looks like inside. Very good. Well, this is one of the most elegant foyers in this area. It, we have quite a large room here to enter. We have the coffered ceiling up above, and uh, the uh, staircase that you see looks like mahogany, but it's actually a soft wood, and all through are carvings that are Grecian carvings. We have Several that are, you'll see it in... Egg and dart. Egg and dart, yes. And then we have a rope here, and we have, mo most importantly, we have here dental. dental. And you see the dental around the ceiling as well, and that's another feature that you see in the Victorian home. Here. That's a neat uh, light on the newel post. Well, that is actually part of the original house, and uh, it was here from the very beginning, and it's... It's beautiful, we think. The leaded glass is original also? Yes, it is. The, the leaded glass in the, in the you mean over yes. here? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, the leaded glass all through the house. There's various that are Tiffany-style leaded glass. And we also have several places where you will see another feature of the um, Victorian style is uh, the ionic columns that we have along in here. Again, it looks as though it's mahogany, but it's actually a soft wood. Hasn't really had very much care over the hundred years that the house has been here and yet it still looks beautiful. Uh, we have a, a couple of features in the house that are not the uh, features of the house, but of the family that e eventually bought it, the Rankin family. And this um, clock that we see, this grandfather clock in the corner, was a wedding present uh, for Mr. and Mrs. Rankin. Those are the parents of Mrs. Bembridge, and the house is named for her. And uh, the, that 
was actually also back from the original time of the house, which was 1906, because that's when her parents were married. Here's a picture of the people who were responsible for building the house. Stephen and Josephine Stephen Green. Stephen and Josephine Green, yes. They were um, quite well-known uh, people in the Long Beach area, and as you said, he was a banker, and uh, was really well along in life when they built this house. And uh, so he only died six years after they moved in. I understand that uh, when they owned the house, uh, Dame Nellie Melba uh, was here, the yes. uh, opera star from uh, Austri uh, Australia? Yes, she was. And she stayed in the master bedroom, which we will see in a little while. It's a very large master bedroom. I think that you'll, um, you'll find it beautiful. Let's go on. All right. This is the first parlor. And we have uh, some guests here that are enjoying some of the things that are really recently, another one recently done um, improvement. One of the things is we have the sofa that has been in this house for some years, and our two of our guests are enjoying the sofa. And that sofa, we didn't know that it was really the original sofa that Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Rankin, B Dorothy Bembridge's parents, had purchased and brought to the house until we recently had it uncovered and recovered, and we found the original uh, uh, channel um, upholstering style that is on the back of the of the sofa. So we had it redone with a fabric that was very similar to the original fabric, and we are thrilled that we've had this recently done. Another, uh, The sorry. piano also is original to the house, is it not? Yes, they it is. They bought that on their honeymoon? Yes, they did. We have a letter that was sent from uh, from uh, England from by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Rankin and telling the family that they had bought this piano and had it sent back uh, right after they were married. They, this is a Steinway, and the other pan piano in here is also a Steinway. That was bought at a later time in the 1920s. We think it was restored in the 1920s. Uh, frequently, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Rankin and Dorothy Bembridge would play together because they were both uh, expert pianists. We have another thing that has been recently recovered, a lovely uh, set, he set, which is in the foyer, and this, this rocker, which was done, uh, with the money was from one of, our, um, one of our members who recently passed on, and part of her legacy to us was to have this recovered for us to enjoy with the new covers that are much more beautiful than the original. Mm -hmm. So, or, well, it's actually similar to the original. It's much more beautiful than what was covered over, which was not... Uh, not as pretty as this is. And I notice you have these beautiful pocket doors. Yes, we do, and they still work. Many of them are still working. Uh, and uh, these have been closed off totally. These two that you're, you're looking at right here have been totally closed off. Some of them don't work as well as others, but uh, after 100 years, I think we're, we're very lucky to have any of them working. Do you have to treat the wood? No, we don't do anything to the wood. We just uh, wipe it off, and we don't put any oil on it or, or treat it at all. Once, uh, maybe a, very rarely we would, but we've been told not to do anything to the wood. We've been told to leave it the way it is and not put any kind of special oil because that would really re reduce the life of the uh, finish. And if it's lasted 100 years, why, exactly. why knock success? Exactly. So. Uh, another thing you might be interested in is the feature. I notice you're looking at the feature along the walls here. These walls, uh, we think, are the original covering on the walls. They're not wallpaper. Some people think it is, but it's actually a type of... of, of uh, paint that is different colors that are sort of uh, pat, patted on, sponged on, and it was very stylish back in 1906 and has come back in style after all these years, but it, we, be, we are quite certain that this is the original finish on the walls. And this this, this is, is the second this, parlor? This, the second what? parlor also could be called the library. We have some books in here. We have beautiful tile with Roman uh, uh, goddesses, I guess you would call them, or ladies, lovely ladies uh, out in the fireplace. And again, we have the egg and dart uh, on, the, on the wood molding, and we have the um, ionic columns. The picture on the fireplace over here is a picture of um, Mrs. Bembridge's family when they were back in Cambridge, Nebraska, her father and mother. At this picture, she was quite a little girl. She was probably about seven or eight. She was 10 um, when they moved here, and so she, uh, she was, it was before they moved here. She taught at Jordan High School, did she not? Yes, she did. She taught at several high schools in Long Beach, and Jordan was one of them. Mm -hmm. She taught music, of course, and she was an excellent pianist. And this is the dining room? The dining room has a couple of interesting features. One of the most interesting, which we like to talk to people about, and you seldom see them, is this uh, a chandelier. It's actually called a gasolier because when this house was built, we always think, well, we've had electricity for a long time. Well, we have, but... 
Originally, in 1906, electricity wasn't always turned on. It wasn't turned on all day long. So sometimes if the electricity wasn't turned on and you wanted to have some light, you would have to have the gas light. The gas has been disconnected since then, but we still have the, the fixtures, and we now just use, of course, the electrical. The ceiling in this room is one of another my absolute favorites. Yes, another coffered ceiling, which is, is beautiful. Uh, and uh, I like the one in the, in the entry way. Uh, we also have another interesting feature that was, uh, was, was an innovation that was created by Mrs. Bembridge's mother. When she came here, the, the, uh, the, the glass case for the uh, china case was closed in the back with wood. And her mother said, well, we need more light in this room. So she opened it up and put a window in behind. So now you can bring light into the room and it shows off her uh, silver for china and uh, glassware and the various uh, things that she had in her collection. And of course, we still, on the other side, each side of the, uh, of the, of the um, case, we have Original leaded glass the windows. The beautiful leaded glass windows, yes, they're lovely. Now, the breakfast room here, this well, the breakfast room, add on? Yes, the breakfast room was added on in 1926. As I said, <coughs> Mrs. Bambridge's parents bought the house in 1919 and uh, decided to add on to it. We originally had the porch that went all the way around the house, and they cut off part of the porch, and this window that you see, the uh, bay window uh, in the dinette area, probably was part of this dining room. And the whole thing was moved out and made into <coughs> a, a dinette area. As you notice, the light fixture is different because by not the time we came to 1924, we no longer needed gas lights, so they had electric only. And the, this dinette area is next to a kitchen that was also added on in 1926. And the kitchen was quite small for a house this size. It is. Yes, well, that's because Mrs. Bembridge's mother was not much of a cook. She didn't like to cook. Mrs. Bembridge didn't also like to cook. And they were musicians, and they didn't need a large kitchen. I think they once said that we're mus musicians, not cooks, so they we don't need a big kitchen. That's what she said to her second husband when <laughs> she married, and she was by this time in her mid-40s, and she said, I will give you Beethoven and Brahms, but you have to do all the cooking. And we have uh, a 1926 kitchen here with uh, marble, marble, uh, how pastry. much they used it, I don't know, but a marble pastry uh, uh, roller pl place. And we have one thing very interesting here I think you might like to say. We have a garbage disposal, 1926 garbage disposal. This little thing opens up. There's a garbage can outside. And it doesn't <laughs> require power. It <laughs> doesn't require power. Or a power. switch. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right. This is really small for this size of a house. Yes, it is. It's a tiny room. For it's beautiful glass doors. Uh, yes, these, uh, it's amazing to me what was done by the, the uh, people who did the restoration in 1926. Originally, the wall ended here, so they put these doors in, they put, I don't know where they, they got the, uh, this was probably like the house was maybe uh, 20 years old, and they, they put um, paneling in. It matches exactly yeah. the next room, as though it was made at the same time. But it was 20 years later that they Must did have it. been a master craftsman. It had to have been, yes. Now we're going into what was the original kitchen? Yes, if you go in and notice in the original kitchen, up on the wall, you see the two uh, vents for the, for the uh, stove that was originally in the kitchen. This kitchen has now been turned into a, an office for us. We use it, we have a computer in here, we have a table in the center that we use for meetings. And uh, some of the original furniture is in here. Actually, this was, it was originally turned into a bedroom. And it was to be used by Mrs. Bembridge's grandfather for a while. And then in the end, her, during the last years of her life, because she was almost 90 when she died, was not able to really get upstairs very well. So this was her bedroom as well. Now we're using it as an office, and we um, would probably continue to do it that way. There's a downstairs bathroom there. That's there four, is, four you, bathrooms in the house? That's there are four bathrooms in the house. If you'd like to look at the original uh, uh, pull, pull chain toilet, you may. Uh, we have, uh, we're using a storage area here. We have a lot of things in this bathroom, but the original pull chain toilet is quite nice because uh, uh, it's not working now, but uh, you can see uh, what it looked like back in the 1906 when they had this back bathroom. 
Four baths in a house was quite progressive, wasn't it? This was a very magnificent house. This is one of the, actually we've been told it was probably the most magnificent house in this area in Long Beach when it was built. Hmm. And we're very happy that Mrs. Bembridge was so adamant about having it destroyed because they were going to tear this house down when they enlarged the park next door. The Drake Park was right next door to us, but Mrs. Bembridge was not going to allow that to happen. <laughs> Shall we go on upstairs? Yes. We have two ways to go upstairs. Uh, if you can see the back staircase here, we're not going to take that. We're going to go up the more beautiful staircase. This was probably when the Greens had the house. They had, very likely they had a servant, Mr. and Mrs. Green, and they had four bedrooms upstairs. Very likely they had a servant. We don't know the details, but this, the, the staircase comes back, back down here directly to the kitchen, which used to be the kitchen here. So we feel that this is, was, a servant in the house and this would have been the way to get to the kitchen. How many rooms do you have here? Altogether the house has 18 rooms. And this is another bath? Another bathroom. Let me turn, yes, turn the light on. This is probably the bathroom Mrs. Bembridge used in the last years of her life because it is, uh, well it's working, functioning now and it's uh, it still works and we use it. It's very uh, old as you can see from the fixtures. Um, hasn't changed at all in a hundred years. It's large, high ceilings, aren't they? Yes, they are. They're Except in the big. bathroom. <laughs> yeah, well, this bathroom is actually built under the staircase. Right. And there is something I need to talk about as we go up the front staircase, too, regarding the ceilings and the bathrooms, and I think that you would find it interesting. There are two landings. The first landing on the main staircase this one, as I've spoken to you about, has the stained glass windows and the ionic columns next to this mirror. And then as we go up the stairs, we come to a second landing with a little sitting area. And I'll turn this light on so that you can see. This is something new that we've had done. Oh, the light didn't used to work. No, we didn't used to have a light here. We had an electrician come and do a few things for us, and this is one of the things that he did, was to wire this light so that now we have a nice little sitting area that you could actually use with, um, with a light here and a, a little settee. And I want you to turn around and look over here at this floor that is coming out, and you see that there there isn't anything holding this room up. This, this cantilevered floor, and it's hard to imagine what room could be above this floor. You would think, well, it's probably a very light room, something that wouldn't take a lot of stress, and you wouldn't worry about it. But when we go upstairs, you'll see that's not the case. It's a beautiful staircase. It is beautiful. I wish we still had workmanship like this in this day and age. Oh yes, well, that's a lost art. Now, we'll go into the main bedroom, which is very large. Oh, bright in here, too. And since we've just been talking about it, I'd like you to turn your attention to the room that was cantilevered. The bathroom. Of all rooms, and that's why if you looked at the ceiling a little closely in the foyer, you saw that there was a little bit of leakage because we had the bathroom above it, and there had been a little leakage, and it had gone through and, and caused some chipping of the paint. But the uh, obviously when the tub is filled, this is a very heavy room. And I can't imagine the weight of, with that tub full of water in a body. And yet it has held up for 100 years, and... Uh, You'd think it would not hold, but it, there, in the attic, there are some um, angled beams and iron bars that are holding this room up, and they've held it for 100 years. And this little room? Another little room off of the main uh, bedroom is the uh, sewing room. We have a sewing machine that we think belonged to Mrs. Bembridge's grandmother. She did quite a bit of uh, beautiful sewing. Uh, we have some examples of her work around the house. The bedspread is probably hers, now the, which we'll uh, look at a little bit. Now, the sleeping porch was enclosed at the same time they built the kitchen? Yes, it was. The sleeping porch, uh, I think probably we've talked to some people about maybe opening again and have been discouraged because I believe probably what happens, we get some pretty heavy winds here sometimes, and I would imagine that it probably became um, 
uh, not very comfortable for them to have it open uh, as they did. So they've le we've left it and we will leave it closed. And this is Mrs. Br uh, Rankin, this is the main hand handiwork? We think, well, not Mrs. Rankin, uh, Mrs. Taylor, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Bembridge's oh, grandmother. okay. Yes, we think. I mean, we really don't know, uh, but we think that it is. We, um, um, we think it's very lovely. It's the typical 1920 style. We have a mannequin here with a dress on because we're planning on having a uh, Christmas celebration uh, in early in December, and our period is going to be the 1940s. So we have our mannequin dress in a beautiful gown from the 1940s period, and uh, we'll have that shown at that time. When is your Christmas program going It'll to It'll be December the 1st. Second. I second, so I'm sorry, second, December the 2nd, Sunday. Sunday, yes. Cost? Sunday. Uh, I think they were going to charge, I'm, think, I'm not sure, I believe it's $20. They can always call to find out yes, more information. Yes, call Long Beach Heritage, absolutely, yes. And this is another bedroom? Yes, it is, and we have another sliding door, and this one again works. You can pull it aside and show it. It was very common at the time this house was built to have two bedrooms uh, next to one another. This one of them might have been Mrs. Green's room and the other one was Mr. Green's room. But probably when we think, and certainly we're showing it this way, that this would have been Mrs. Bembridge's room when she was a little girl. And we have some of the things that she saved, which we have a lot of children come through and have tours through here. And the children are entranced by this little dollhouse that we have and the set of dishes that was given to Mrs. Bembridge when she was 10 years old by an aunt. She has an inscription on the bottom of the box that this was a present to her when she was 10. So, so I notice there's a sink in here. Is that oh a very yes. Victorian um, well, idea? Well, we have the bed, the, the master bedroom has a master bath, but the two other bedrooms uh, in this, beyond, with the other one behind here and this one, both have sinks. So they can use the, they can wash up. This one has a mirror over it and a light, which the back bedroom does not have. And this is a place where you can get cleaned up, but then if you needed to use the rest of the bathroom, take a bath, use the bathroom, then you could go down the hall because we have another bathroom on this floor. We have two on the first floor, two on the second floor. Let's keep going. Now the wood is different up here than it is down below. Oh, it's much you. lighter. Well, thank you for uh, helping me to remember that, Harvey, because I uh, was going to mention that to you. The interesting thing about the wood in this house is that it is the same wood downstairs as it is upstairs, but the stain is different. And another thing, normally when you would have people go up to the second floor, you wouldn't have the details. But look, you still see the details. You see the egg and dart around the top of the doorways. And you have the same kind of beautiful detailing upstairs as you have downstairs. But it's not as exquisite up here no, as not, it is downstairs. No, not as much as downstairs, but you still have it. Another thing that is very, I believe you were looking at already. Uh, the transoms? The transoms over each of the doors. We have it all, each of the bedroom doors has a transom that allows air circulation. So you could open the, um, open the uh, windows and have air circulation. It wouldn't be too warm. We don't have air conditioning in this house. Uh, we do have heat. We've only got five minutes, so I want to hurry through because right. I want to go out and see the carriage house too. No. Well, the second bed, the, the second, the, the back bedroom is the bedroom that we call Neil's bedroom. It has many of Neil's things in here. It has the iron bed that he originally had, and two of our members uh, were responsible for redoing this quilt. This quilt had been. Um, in shreds, and we, I was thinking of throwing it away, which was a horrible idea. That One of my members uh, looked at this, and she put it together, reconstructed the quilt, and now we have it sitting on the bed, so we're very pleased with it. We have Neil's um, accordion. He played the accordion and was uh, quite, uh, quite accomplished. And uh, With the UCLA marching band? Yes, he also went to USC. He went to both colleges, UC, UC, USC and UCLA, and that's why we have his uh, US, UCLA uh, drum major hat. And this is another one of the bathrooms yes, up there? Yes, the, the last of the four bathrooms upstairs here. Oops, there we go. And this last room up here is the room that was used by Mrs. Memory's father, Mr. Rankin, as an office. And we have his old typewriter and adding machine, which still has the glass leaded, uh, the uh, Bevel. Bevel, thank you. Bevel glass inside here and the uh, 
uh, the machines that he had. And we have one piece of, of, of clothing here that was not Mr. Rankin's. It says Charlie Bembridge on it. It belonged to Mrs. Bembridge's husband, Mr. Charles Bembridge. And uh, it was because... Someone must have been in the Masons. Yes, he was in the Masons and the... Uh, the Fez? The Fez that we have, the one that is the more recent Fez, which I should show you, is El Bacal. This was the Fez that they had when they were in the Los Angeles group. But the Long Beach people joined, had their own. And it was L for Long, L, B for Beach, Cal, Long Beach, California. Ha! Huh. <laughs> yes. Creative little devils, weren't they? Yes, they still have it. The El Bacal is still here in Long Beach, yes. Well, Let's run down and uh, check out the carriage house. Very good. Now this uh, little garden here, this is uh, something new? Yes, we're very, very pleased. It was, it was offered to us this last summer from Leadership Long Beach. It was one of their projects that they wanted to do something beautiful for the community, so they put this re retain, re 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 the, a garden that will not need too much water. I oh, forgot. maintenance free. Maintenance basically. free garden. It, well, it, it has Drought needed. Resistant. It has needed some water uh, to get it started, but it should really go without much water after it's 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 established. And this garden uh, has has been something that we're really beautiful. I we're very happy to, to have it. I have to mention also the driveway. Yes. What an improvement. Oh, this was very unsafe. We've had people tripping on walking along the driveway. There were major holes in it, and now we have this lovely smooth driveway that leads up to our redone, reconstructed carriage house, which is let's ramrod straight, you might notice. It was leaning let's, badly before. Let's point out the uh, aviary here as Yes, we go. that was recently redone, and the person who was responsible for doing that work was one of our neighbors, Richard Fair. He's done so much work here. He's always been very much appreciated by Mrs. Bembridge. He did, helped her a lot when she was alive. When I was involved here, I used to call Richard all the time, yes. and he was always Johnny on the spot. Yes, he always has been, yes. And the carriage house does look so much better. We're so pleased with the work that was done. Uh, the fact that it's straight now and the fact that we now have back the original carriage house door. And that door is the original door that was on the back. There was one on the back and one on the front because when you put a horse through the carriage, you couldn't get him turned around inside. So you'd have to have him go in one side and go out the other side. The back side now is a reconstruction of this door. This door was actually taken down uh, when cars started to be used, and it was used as a garage, but no longer. We now have it as a carriage house, I back the way it was. you're going to build in a... a yes, if you look over there, a, a sort of an uh, ugly spot there now, we have plans to have a new building put in there. It will be a, a bathroom and a storage room, and it will be accessible for people that are uh, disabled. Now, we only have a short time. Uh, give me uh, hours of operations if somebody wants to see the house. Uh, is it uh, accessible? We have uh, established the hours uh, every Tuesday afternoon. We are here and we'll open it up for anybody who comes by. Uh, but also we have, I think it's the third uh, Saturday every month, uh, they need to call and make reservations to make sure that we have staff here that will handle it. But that is, uh, that is our two times that we have it open and it'll be all day Saturday. And then you have special events every now yes. and then. Yes, we do. Very, a couple of times a year, two or three times a year. Is this, um, could, could somebody rent the, the house if they wanted for a function? We haven't established anything like that at this time. <laughs> Iris, thank you. You did an outstanding job, <laughs> as always. <laughs> thank you. Buddy. And oh, I, I just am so amazed at the amount of work that you guys have done since I was here in 2000. Yes. It, it's, we, we are too. We're uh, very thrilled. With Dorothy it. must be happy as a lark up well, in Well, we feel that she would be, <laughs> the, the, I th she loved children, and I think she would really love the children's shows that we put on here, and we have them, uh, and when school gets going, we're going to have quite a few children's programs coming through here, and that would be wonderful. Okay, once again, thank you. Thank you, Harvey. And that's our show for this time. Be sure and join us next time as we take another walk through history and uncover more Long Beach treasures.